pressure on Kent County Council has been enormous. As we know, we've documented this all week, very large numbers of people illegally crossing the English Channel, including some children. As a percentage, it's tiny, but still a real problem. Kent Social Services completely overwhelmed and having to put children into hotels, not an ideal situation. So the government overnight have decided to change the system and they are effectively going to allocate numbers of migrant children to councils around the country, giving them a couple of weeks to appeal back against this if they want to. And I, you know, Kent County Council, Roger Goff in charge of the council, he was delighted this morning about this, and I'm not surprised. But how does the rest of the country feel about this? Well, I want to go back up to Sunderland in the northeast, and there's a reason for that. There are 17 times more migrants overall being settled in the northeast of England than are being settled in the southeast of England. So, in a sense, the Channel crisis is now being felt in virtually every town across the country. So let's go to Sunderland and speak to some local officials up there. And I'm hoping to be joined by Paul Donaghy, councillor for Washington South Ward in Sunderland. Paul, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. And I'm also joined by Sam Johnston, councillor, again on Sunderland City Council for St Peter's Ward. Sam, let's begin with you. So the government are saying to you, you must take some of these children. Uh, but on top of that, you know, there are hotels, there are private residences in Sunderland uh, that are currently housing people who've recently come across the Channel. As a local councillor, Sam, are you happy with that? Yes, I think, you know, when people arrive in this country, we have a responsibility to look after them and take care of them. We can't just leave them to fend their own devices. But we must be clear here still, we're talking about very small numbers. You know, the last estimate of the number of asylum seekers in Sunderland was 400, which is a percentage of the population is very low. And I think we have the responsibility to look after those people, and we also have the capability to do it. And you'd be perfectly happy then, Sam, if next year it's another 1,000, because it still would be quite a low percentage, yeah? I think, you know, a 1,000, again, is quite a low percentage, but what we have to talk okay. about, again, is, you know, there isn't... The latest announcement you're talking about from the government last night said quite clearly it was talking about unaccompanied children. Yes. And it said that local authorities would not have to accept any children once the number of unaccompanied children reached 0.0% of their overall child population. So let's be clear, despite the announcement, we're still talking about very small numbers that can be managed by top-tier local authorities. I accept that point. In terms of the sheer numbers of children, it is a small number, but there is a bigger issue going on here. And, you know, Sam, as you know... Uh, the numbers that are across the channel illegally so far this year are treble what they were last year with no sign of this problem easing. Let's get Paul Donahue's opinion on this. Paul, uh, you know, it's a very small number of children um, and even the 400 uh, people who are claiming asylum that are currently being put up at the taxpayers' expense in Sunderland is such a low percentage that you really shouldn't be worried about it. How do you feel on that? Personally, we need to be prioritising our local residents first. We've got homeless in Sunderland. We've got a homeless charity called uh, Sunderland Community Soup Kitchen who feed on average 25 to 30 people a night. We need to look after their, our own residents first. Priority should be given to local residents. I know families who've got four or five children who've been told by the local authority to, to use their dining room, to use their sitting room as a, a second or third bedroom. Um, I understand that children need to be taken care of, and Sam is right, we have got a duty of care to take care of these children. But some of these children, we're talking about 14, 15 year olds, and we can't verify the age. To me, that's a security issue. If you put these children into our system, you have to be able to identify who they are. We've got to take care of our own children. I understand the point that we need to take care of these people, but we need to make sure we know who they are as well. Well, that is, of course, the big security point, and, and, and the thing that really I'm furious about, and this doesn't apply to the children. But, but, but you know, the huge number of undocumented young males that are coming into the country is a big security issue. But, Sam, back to you. Back to you. 
I mean, depending how you measure these things, but, you know, the government figures suggest that up to 37% of children living in Sunderland are living at or below what would be known as the poverty line, and that there is a very substantial weight in Sunderland, in the North East, as there is across the country, uh, to get on the council housing list. Do you understand why, uh, you know, uncontrolled numbers, and albeit you may say it's small in percentage terms, but do you understand why uncontrolled numbers of people coming into the country, living here year after year, claiming asylum, and even when they fail being allowed to stay, can you understand why people are getting upset about this? Absolutely, absolutely. And let's be clear, for all I'm saying we're talking about small percentages, that doesn't mean we can't not control the border. And I'm glad the government now, through agreeing a new deal with the French, are looking to control this. But, <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. I, 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 I can promise. Sam, how many times have we heard that? Look, the, well, the, the, the fact of the matter is we are reliant on the French to pull their weight. This government is trying to control it. And they understand as well that local residents in Sunderland, in any town across the country, do face their own problems. They do need housing and they do need support themselves from local authorities. And that's why the government is trying to get it under control. And it's why, as local councillors, Paul is right, we must be privy as well to the needs of our residents and make sure that they are looked after by the authority that they are paying their council tax to. All right. And, Paul, a final word to you. Are you as optimistic as Sam that the government have got to deal with the French and that these problems are going to ease quickly? Personally, I wouldn't be paying France a penny. France have got to stick to their side of the bargain. France need to do more on their own borders to stop the migrants coming through in the first place. We need to stop the incentives. We need to stop the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, if you will, that the... The migrants are coming here to get. We need to, to, to knock that on the head. And France need to pull away. I wouldn't give France a, a penny until right. they Gentlemen, pull the finger thank, out. Thank you. Politely. Thank you for that debate. Sam Johnson, Paul Donaghy, two Conservative councillors. They're on Sunderland Council. And in a way, the difference of opinion between them perhaps sums up the problem that the Conservative Party at a national level has got. They are very, very deeply split on this issue and how to deal with it.